Hi and welcome to this week's episode of the Business Finance Bulletin, episode number 87. business finance bulletin. So what have I got for you this week? Well we're going to be looking at the bank's loan appeal process. We're also going to be looking at developments in the crowdfunding world. We're also going to be looking at where business owners are getting their advice from. And in my business finance tip of the week, a clip from an interview I did looking at the importance of the sector that you operate in when it comes to getting bank finance. So let's start this week's bulletin by asking you a question. Did you know that if a bank had turned aside your loan request, you could actually go in and formally appeal that answer? No? Well, it's not surprising because many business owners don't know that. Now, every bank has a loan appeal process in place. So where's all this come from? Well, back in 2010, at the start of the credit crunch, the government decided to put together a business finance task force to have a look at what banks could do to improve the way that they dealt with business owners. And one of the 17 recommendations that came out was that banks had to put it together a formal loan appeal process. Now, this would be where the business owner felt aggrieved with a decline, agreed with a no. And so they wanted an avenue for business owners to be able to formally appeal the answer. In order to check that the banks um, actually had this process in place and that it was working, they appointed an independent adjudicator, a guy called Professor Griggs, to go in every year and do a review of how the process was working. And he's reported every year. And his latest quarterly report has come out covering the period April to June 2015. And the findings are really interesting. During that quarter, he's found out that there have been 858 appeal requests. Now, of those, 196 have been overturned so a no has been turned into a yes and that's the success rate of 23 percent in pounds well that comes out to an extra 1.5 million pounds that was agreed now that's not a bad uh, bad turnover rate but um, when you go back to the very first report professor griggs highlights that initially the success rate of turning a no into a yes was actually 40 percent so we've gone from 40 percent down to 23%. Now you may think that's a deterioration on the bank's behalf, but Professor Griggs actually points out that over the last five years, the banks have got a lot better at filtering out and engaging with their customers. So as a result, the businesses that are being referred through the loan appeal process, the quality has really got a lot lower. And so there's not much avenue for appeals to be turned over from a no into a yes. So if you do feel aggrieved by the answer that you've got from a bank um, and you want to go through the loan appeal process, simply go to your bank's website and in the search box in there, type in loan appeal process and you'll be directed to the right page and just follow those steps. Really useful if you think the bank has got their answer wrong turn to crowdfunding. Well, Funding Circle has just announced that it's changing its offering uh, to small business owners looking for funding. Now, previously, so Funding Circle is a typical crowdfunding platform. You apply for a loan of, say, £100,000, put up on the platform, and individual investors then bid varying amounts at varying interest rates. Now, this variability in interest rates Funding Circle now feels is a problem. The reason being, many business owners like to have certainty about the interest rate that they're going to get before they enter into the deal and go through the whole process. Um, and there have been instances where um, the final interest rate is really not to the liking of the business owner. And so Funding Circle have now changed this and really given a commitment upfront with a fixed interest rate as to what the business owner will be charged. So how does it work? Well, when Funding Circle goes through its credit assessment process, they allocate a risk rating to each application. So you can go from an A plus down to an E. And the, the lower or the higher the rating from A to E, E is the very highest interest rate, and the A plus is going to be the very best. And there are fixed interest rates in between there. So it'll now take out the uncertainty, not only for you as a business owner, if you're looking to apply for a loan from them, but also as an investor as well. If you do invest through the likes of Funding Circle, it'll just mean that the uncertainty is taken away from you as to whether your bid will be accepted or not. So another interesting development as to how the crowdfunding sector is continuing to evolve. If you want to know more, go along to the Funding Circle website, fundingcircle.com, or feel free to get in touch with us as well. 
Staying with the alternative finance scene, uh, interesting developments come I from iZetto. Now, iZetto is a provider of mobile card payments. So how it works is you can now take cards um, through iZetto platform on your phone, on your tablet. They also provide contactless keypads as well. And it's an alternative to some of the big merchant service providers out there. So the latest development here now is that iZettle have announced that shortly they are going to be offering loans to their customers. So if you're an iZettle uh, client and you're currently collecting card payments through iZettle, iZettle now know exactly how much on average per month you are putting through them. So as a result, they have a little bit of certainty as regards the income that you're generating. So what they've announced is they're now going to provide loans to business owners. So how does it work? Well, the details are a little bit sketchy because it hasn't been formally launched, but from the sound of it, how it's going to work is they will look at your monthly turnover and loan you on average one times to two times your monthly turnover. So how do you pay the loan back? Very simple. Every time you make a card payment, uh, iZettle will take a percentage and settle it against your loan. No interest rate, it's going to be a fixed fee and the term obviously depends on the activity going through on your account. So a really innovative way of getting alternative sources of finance and working capital from away from the high street banks. So if you want to know more about um, iZettle, just go along to their website, iZettle, that's I-Z-E-T-T-L-E dot co dot UK and you'll find out a lot more information from there. Now, when it comes to raising finance, getting the right advice is really important. And that's vital to us here at Business Loan Services. We really like to get under the skin of a business to understand how it works, what needs fixing, and therefore knowing what the right source of finance is going to be. Well, an interesting survey caught my eye this week from IGF Invoice Finance, and they had a look at the types of finance sources that businesses are tapping into. And perhaps, unfortunately, not surprisingly, but they found that 30% of business owners said that they go to Google or social media for their financial advice. You know, nearly a third of you doing that. Now, whilst that's great for immediate, so your hands-on advice, you know, sometimes it can be out of date. It may not even be the right advice. So the finding from this survey, really the message is, if you're looking for finance, make sure you go to the right place. Find your right local advisors who you can sit down, speak to face to face to make sure they really understand your business because, hey, the finance market is constantly changing. New things are coming out all the time and systems and processes and eligibility criteria are changing all the time. So make sure you don't get caught out go to the right place for advice. Of course, you'll stick and continue watching this weekly bulletin where I'll be bringing you all the latest news, but also you'll just pick up the phone, uh, drop us an email, info at businessloanservices.co.uk if you ever want to chat through a deal. Just don't rely on the internet. You never know what you're going to get back. So let's move on to my business finance tip of the week. And today I've got a clip from you from an interview that I did in which I'm discussing the importance from the bank's point of view of the sector or the industry that you are in. Let's go to that clip now. And you, you mentioned earlier that different banks are interested in loaning for different sectors. Mm. Um, so what sectors are more challenging to get yeah. loans or to borrow finance? Mm. Well, so that's the, the next, it is about being in the wrong sector. What we've got to understand is that all banks are different. Um, whilst they're all there, in for, uh, there to make money and they do that via lending, then there are some sectors banks like and some sectors banks don't like. Mm. So not all banks are the same. So what you've got to understand, first of all, before you go to your bank is to just to suss out for them, are you lending to the sector that I'm in? Because sometimes they may say no. And if that's the case, then you know that this is not the bank for you. You may wonder, well, okay, on what circumstances then would banks say they don't like one sector and they do like another? Traditionally, why they wouldn't look at a particular sector would be that they don't like the inherent risks in that industry. Um, so they will just turn around and say, we're not into that sector. Okay. Mm. And, and is there... Is there is there, does credit come into this? Will they, will they check on your credit score? And 
Yes, yeah. I mean, w- one of the reasons why on, on the sector side as well was they look at your credit score because industries particularly have poor credit scores related to them. So if we looked at, oh, so, example, so the industry rather yeah, than the individual. Yeah, yeah okay. and industries, because they would look at it and say, typically the risk in that sector from a credit perspective is very high. So if we look at it, if we were to go run down a list of sectors that banks don't like, uh, pubs, uh, clubs, hotels, in fact, it's probably be quicker if we just list the ones that they do like. <laughs> I guess the list would be less. <laughs> yeah, for, but pubs, clubs, hotels, restaurants, speculative property development. Mm. You know, all of these, those are the kind of key sectors that banks really don't like. Yeah. So those are the ones that if you're in that sector, it's worth you picking the phone up to the bank and saying, okay, guys, are you into this or not? Because there will be other providers out there. It just may not be the bank that you're particularly with. So there we are. Just make sure when you're preparing your finance request, just give your bank a quick call to make sure that you're in the right sector. So that's it for this week. Thanks very much as ever for being with me. I hope you enjoyed the bulletin. And as ever, please do give it a like or share it amongst your friends and colleagues if you found it useful. Don't forget, you can also get the podcast version um, of this bulletin so you can listen to at your leisure in your car or wherever. All you have to do is download it from our SoundCloud or iTunes page. Simply search for Business Finance Bulletin. So that's it for this week. Thanks very much. Look forward to being with you again next Friday. Have a great, successful and profitable week. Bye-bye now.